correctional children's services to cover the head of legal and mental services be authorised to agree all necessary terms and make all appropriate arrangements, including the completion of all requisite legal documentation as appropriate and necessary to give effect to 12.1 Finally, the Cabinet agrees to the other matters detailed in this report being referred to a future meeting of Cabinet. Thanks uh, for that, Julia. I mean, I um, uh, clearly, the, the new Brighton Bay Nursery uh, proposal uh, seems to uh, be um, pretty uh, broadly agreed, and I think there's no, um, no, no problem with uh, that, that going ahead. But uh, uh, as you sort of uh, I think there are, uh, there are other issues and information and some of the other proposals that we need to um, uh, get further report back on. So I think it makes sense to, to defer that, those elements of this report to um, a future meeting of Cabinet and we will report back just as quickly as you can. Okay, so can we agree first recommendation to Cabinet? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. <coughs> Okay, that takes us on then to um, item four, the future council project update. Um, I mean, clearly this is a, an important report. It sets out the uh, methodology and the work that we're doing around remodeling the council um, in the light of the significant financial challenges that we face. Um, and it uh, presents some broad principles and broad um, options which we will use to um, uh, as a basis for the more detailed proposals and for further um, consideration uh, uh, next month by the uh, scrutiny committees. Um, I think sadly the, um, the national context continues to be difficult. Government continues to um, make significant cuts to local authority budgets, particularly in the north, um, which uh, we've, we've debated previously. But um, inevitably, we do need to um, look at new models of service delivery going forward. And um, you know, I've said many times that uh, there are no sacred cows, there are no stones that need to be left unturned in making sure that we can provide our services um, uh, to a good quality and as efficiently as possible. Um, I think throughout all of this, I would just remind Cabinet that we've got our, our core three core priorities which need to, to work as a golden thread through all of the, uh, uh, the work we do on remodeling the council around reducing inequalities, uh, protecting vulnerable people <coughs> communities, and attracting jobs, new jobs and investment and also the principles that we've used in, in the previous two years um, around um, the people, those with broader shoulders bear fewer costs and making sure that as far as we can we protect frontline services. I think those principles are still valid in, in, in this um, process. But um, I think this is probably, you know, it's been around a long time, and this is probably the most sort of thoroughgoing review that we've done of all the council services. We've done a, detailed review of all 81 uh, services and um, uh, I know we are looking at uh, innovative ways of, of, of delivering services going forward and we've got a report later on in the agenda on, um, around our um, uh, day centres which um, I think provides one such model which is uh, quite interesting. So I think we do need to get on with this. I think we've, um, we've mapped out a clear um, process and timetable. I think the only other thing I would emphasise is that there will be a very detailed consultation plan with um, not just all members, but members of the public and other key stakeholders. Um, but I think this is something that will will be an, a, you know, an absolutely key priority for the council, um, certainly um, over the next year and beyond that point as well. Um, I've, got a, I've just got a, an additional recommendation I want to move, but I know Graham, if you want to add anything to this work, if you could sort of add the same thing. Well, the only thing I'll say, Chair, is this is the most thorough 
piece of work that I know the council has done in my uh, experience of government, which is quite a lot these days. Uh, I do know it's a real alternative to the a slash and burn approach that a number of councils have adopted, in other words, uh, irrespective of members' priorities, just to sh shut down or reduce services as council will inevitably be faced with some of those hard choices at some stage, and I can't avoid those hard choices given the level of reduction of funding from the government. But I think what we will do is put forward recommendations to you in terms of the options to reduce services, which will be in line with your corporate priorities of protecting the most vulnerable and other priorities that you outline. We'll also attempt to reduce, as we have done already, quite considerably, uh, layers of management and staffing where we can do to avoid cuts on frontline services. Um, that also will be difficult and painful. But nevertheless, I think that's a preferable role, role than affecting services for the most deprived of our communities. So it'll be a very tough task. There'll be some very tough decisions for officers and members over the next few months. But I will say this is a more constructive approach than just simply shutting down services in a, um, in a, in a rather um, broad way without this detailed consideration. Because these services we know are very important to the public of will, and the jobs are very important to the staff uh, that work for you. Therefore, I think we deserve, uh, the public and the staff deserve uh, us to do our work properly to inform you of good decisions and our new priorities. Okay, I just wanted to add one, one thing to this report. Um, I think it's really important to make, for Cabinet to make the statement or make the point that, um, you know, in an ideal world, we wouldn't want to do any of this. Um, but I think it's important to stress, you know, where the responsibility for this situation lies. And that's with what's happening nationally with the, um, the Tory-led government. And, and, you know, again, I've said many times, um, we're on the receiving end of, I think, a very flawed austerity policy which is discriminating against northern councils, um, particularly areas with high deprivation. And I, I think it's it's important that we say that loudly and clearly, that that's where responsibility lies for the situation we find ourselves in. And we must continue to lobby government and use every opportunity to um, hopefully get it to, to change course because you know, I think all the all the evidence shows that if the current level of cuts from government continue, there's not going to be much left of local government by um, you know 2020. Uh, if we look at we've looked at the graphs of doing etc. before. So I'm going to move the following um, additional recommendation. Um, Cabinet accepts the need to proceed with the remodelling work under the Future Council, Council Initiative, but agrees to express our grave concern with further cuts by the Tory-led government to this council's budget, requiring additional savings of at least £45 million pounds over the next two years. This comes on top of the £109 million pounds worth of cuts over the past three years. Cabinet agrees to write to our four rural MPs asking them to lobby relevant ministers to reverse these damaging cuts. Uh, and I think that just puts, um, uh, sends a message out that, you know, this is not paying less, this is actually causing real damage to our, our local communities uh, and we need to uh, really mobilise uh, as much support as we can for get to, to get the government to rethink this uh, course of action. So, I'll, I'll put that as an additional recommendation. Is, is that agreed, Cabinet? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Okay, that then takes us on to item five, which is the non-domestic rates, discretionary rates relief and reoccupation relief. Um, this is an announcement, this is based on an announcement, as the report says in paragraph 2.3, but not made in the Gilton statement about um, further temporary relief in respect of non-domestic rates for retail properties. Um, the, the important thing for me is that it, it makes it clear that the, uh, the costs of meeting this uh, relief are met in full by government, which um, I think is, is important given the financial con 
context with just Lord's banks. So I, I'm simply going to uh, move that we agree the uh, recommendations in, in paragraph 12. Would they agree? Okay, so that takes us on then to agenda item six, uh, which is a referral from the uh, Transformation and Resources Policy and Performance Committee, 14th of April, uh, around the Local Welfare Assistance Scheme 2014-15 and future support options. And you can see on page 46 the, um, the recommendations uh, from that uh, from that committee. Um, I've got no problem with uh, re agreeing those recommendations, so I just uh, ask can, can we can we support them? Everyone agrees? Okay, thank you. Okay, that takes us then to um, item seven, inward investment marketing, and the two Kevins are going to, uh, to give us a brief presentation on this item. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, yes, sir. I'm a Deputy Solicitor on the board to be back. And then the Deputy Solicitor has a floor. So, 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 Kevin, now you're going to do our two Kevin's to black there. I think, Chair, before we go to this, I think I'm in my hand and stop. A little bit of background to where we, where we are, where we are. Uh, when we developed the investment strategy in uh, 2007, the members agreed that we wanted to be uh, ambitious to open the book. Then the growth option that was. as well as setting that goal, one of the things we want to try and do is develop options that will be unique to real and, and potential opportunities that we could benefit from in the future. Um, so, I don't know what we do with that. Sorry, you didn't have... Yeah. Sorry, John. Um, when we developed the investment strategy, we said we wanted to also to work with some sort of new options that could be unique to real in terms of creating future opportunities across the world. I think it's fair to say that um, the investment strategy and indeed some of our marketing class of support that have been successful in terms of our funds for us. Um, we have got uh, an award winning investment strategy that was recognised by the uh, LGC uh, and the LTA. Um, I think it's fair to say that our entrepreneurship across the world is growing and new businesses is growing significantly higher than all the national uh, and regional average and members will recall that last year it was identified that they had the, had the fastest incidents of fast growing businesses in the whole of the UK uh, after Aberdeen to a state of the highest in, in England. Um, I think it's also fair to say that we see some significant growth in indigenous businesses um, but in order to support all that we, we needed at the time a message, a strategy to make sure that the locally and globally people knew about that. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, you may remember we, we came up with a bad thinking big uh, strap line uh, where we tried to focus on what we're always looking for in the future where we did have ambitions to grow. Uh, we did have ambitions to um, bring new opportunities in and indeed look at what's going globally uh, as well as uh, in the UK. And uh, that strategy, um, again, and the marketing of the Think Big won us a, a national award in 2008 when we won the uh, National Property Marketing Award for, for that as a, uh, a strap line and a, uh, and a uh, campaign. But also since then, uh, we've obviously uh, lived up to the Think Big in building the World Board to see the largest planning application uh, in the country. Um, we also, um, as part of that, Set what we want to look like in 10 to years, bring not only local companies but also national companies looking to invest into where all and get them uh, bangs on uh, into our, our vision. However, one of the things it didn't do was have any particular sectoral focus. It was a strategy that was more about highlighting where we're highlighting the opportunity, highlighting the opportunity, and highlighting the fact that we're now open for business. Um, and I think we're now moving. Have moved into a different, uh, a different area. One of the things that I think is important that we recognise um, now is the work that we started in 2017 by identifying the opportunities has started to come to fruition. Uh, members will be aware. 
aware uh, of the huge opportunities that exist for us in terms of renewable energies, particularly with the fantastic assets we have around Channel Air, uh, the money that the government gave us uh, recently uh, for a region of Gold Fund to support the offshore wind supply chain. And indeed, even today, it was uh, nice to hear the Deputy Prime Minister saying that he believes we're all had a significant future in the UK's renewable energy industry. Um, so I think we've started to build that into place for locations and offer. And indeed, uh, we have two of the world's largest uh, offshore wind manufacturers currently operating in the north of the UK's of energy. Uh, and the opportunities, literally hundreds of billions of pounds of opportunities there exist, not only in offshore wind, but also in the uh, development of, uh, of the manufacturing of uh, new proposed uh, UK and other power stations in the assets that we've got. So we have started to develop a new recipe, certainly around. We've also worked very hard, uh, really, for the last three or four years now to position ourselves in terms of the automotive sector. Uh, again, it was something that was raised by the uh, cable today. 95% uh, of all the UK's uh, manufacturing of automotives takes place within three miles, uh, sorry, three hour drive at will. Um, 1.7 million cars uh, by 2017, 2.5 million engines. Uh, the car probably got to the production line every 28 seconds. However, the challenge we face as a country, uh, the challenge uh, the country faces in front of mind, is that a vast proportion of the cars that go to making those cars come from outside the UK. Uh, they come from China, Japan, uh, Korea, Eastern Europe, uh, and you have the full boy of that. There's not a single uh, wheel, aluminium wheel, made in the UK for all the world. The government has a, has a plan and a strategy against, again, we heard about it today at the National Manufacturing Conference to bring back to the UK many of the industries that were outsourced in the 70s and 80s. And we've been working very closely with the 74 with not only government employees but also with national automotive uh, organisations, particularly with local uh, operators such as GM, JLR, and uh, Bay. Um, I'm very pleased to say that as part of that offer, we also the only northern uh, site uh, that has got a handicap allowance. That was particularly given to us to help attract these companies from internationally to come and locate in Wales to move their businesses into the UK and start being local suppliers rather than international suppliers. So we believe we've now moved into a different position whereby the national marketing marketing will uh, is a place to come and invest and tell you today. The way I'm doing with the rest has changed now. It's not about sending out brochures uh, or putting out there for magazines. It's very much about now face to face, shoe leather, and also for the music interview to help sell the message for us to be able So we've been doing a, a lot of work over uh, recent, the recent past, uh, and I'm pleased to say uh, that through the intervention of the Regions Council, uh, we got support from the European Region Development Fund to be able to actually. Uh, take this forward, to take this forward um, and to uh, part funding, in fact, most of the funding uh, that we're taking forward, the funding that we is coming from the European Union, so you will see the European will go on, on lots of it as we need to. Um, so I said just to recap as well what we've developed, we are the only area on the whole of the west coast of England that is now a centre for offshore renewable energy. That gives us access to special support gives us access to one of the seven areas across the whole of the UK where there are regular conferences for informing regular interfaces uh, both nationally and internationally uh, with the offshore wind farms. So again, we've worked very hard to do that and hopefully all members are aware of the huge success that Canada has had to date in this market but we hope very much new success in the course. How can we support that? Um, Step before about ninety five of all ninety five percent of all car production taking place. Um, interestingly, uh, that ninety five percent of all car production is eighteen of the twenty largest car manufacturers in the world. Uh, so eighteen of those twenty manufacturers are anywhere in the world have sites within a uh, three hour drive of yeah. Um, again, we've had a number of experts talking about manufacturing today. 
has a raw manufacturing event on Friday uh, where we have one of the directors of GM uh, <coughs> telling the audience how desperate he was for them to deal with suppliers and how open he was and how he worked with us to ensure that the market was actually open. And he even said he would be willing to pay more expensive prices to be able to uh, because of the transport costs for some of their suppliers from, from the Far East now. So much is not about human price, it's about choice of price now. So again, a huge opportunity for us there where we can go to the plant factory. This National Trade Centre, uh, again, huge opportunities in terms of uh, supply chain, but also um, actually buying the supplies from Haven mm -hmm. uh, both for the offshore and locals, but also uh, other key uh, sectors here in the world. And we've now got money to support us before we got five million pounds to meet with all the people to support us offshore. Where for the college across the left area, we've got an additional 10 million reasonable from the general uh, support of businesses as well. So, you know, we have sites now. Uh, we have the offer now, and we have the financial support available now. We also have So I think big was about attention. I think big was about others buying into our vision, the captain's vision, the council's vision at that time, as to how we, as a local authority, were going to change our outlook in terms of the building investments, how we would improve the economic vitality of the area, increase more jobs, and get more of our residents into employment and tackle some of the severe uh, disadvantages that we've seen at that time. So one of the things success of that time, significant success, members know, JSA, we the new South Korean starts significant uh, success. But I, I think uh, we think uh, that the big, big uh, marketing campaign we've had today and it's now time to move forward to what to our focus uh, campaign. Uh, so Kevin will just talk you through what that campaign is. Okay, thanks. Um, so as uh, Kevin explained, the, the previous stuff we've done over, over the past few years has been really successful. And it's it contributed an awful lot in terms of but it was about potential. It was about what we were going to be like in five years, what we were going to be like in ten years, what we were working towards. The business moving in and out, we were going to be getting it on the ground floor. What we're talking about now is actually what actually better. It's actually what businesses can move in tomorrow, take it off the shelf, and it's actually there for them straight away. We actually we, we were ambitious when we were planning the business today. We went towards achieving these opportunities, and an awful lot of them are now coming. You might have saw them in the next five years. They're all coming together almost all at once, and they're almost an off the shelf offer for certain businesses, particularly businesses within the open, open, and offshore open markets. So that's what the campaign is going to be focused on. We're going to be specifically targeting offshore business businesses and businesses within the automotive industry, particularly those within the supply chain, and that's what we're going to be held in terms of ready now. Um, you don't need to compromise, you don't need to, to adjust, you don't need to worry about transport or skills or infrastructure, about uh, business incentives and financial incentives, about space or so support you need from the, from the council. You don't need to give them our lifestyle and our education, you don't need to worry about where you're going to live, about what you're going to do in your spare time, what school your kids are going to go to. It's all ready and it's ready now and it's ready for you to just take it up and move it. And that's, that's the message behind the whole campaign really, it's going to be specifically targeted at those direct business, at those businesses. Um, and it's going to be targeted specifically for them, but purely and simply because that is where our offer is strongest. For those, for those organisations in the automotive supply chain, in the offshore supply chain, and the, and the manufacturers, we're really the only area in the UK that absolutely pick the edge of box for those areas. I pick them tomorrow, not even in five years, pick them in the future. Which is exactly what we want to tell them, and that's what the campaign is going to be focused on. We have launched a new website which I'm going to show you at the end. Um, it's using the cutting edge technology really that nobody in, certainly nobody in the public sector is actually using at the moment. There are very few organisations in the UK are using at the moment. It's actually the first time I saw it was the developer showed me where I think it's been like using it for public launches, but it's really quite it's really quite brand new stuff and it's quite impressive stuff. So I'm going to show you that in a second. It's also responsive. So every um, PC, well, 99% of the PCs in China and India 
Radio Germany, all of our father daughter youth is really for this radio, work on their houses. It'll also work, um, it'll, the, the actual website, if you log on it through a desktop PC like I'm going to do in a second, it'll open up in a certain fashion. If you open it on an iPad or any kind of tablet or smartphone or whatever, an iPhone, it'll look very different. It'll basically reorganize itself to display the information in the best format to be able to give you the class. So it's, it's really quite good stuff. It also has all the key information in German manner, in German manner as well. German particularly for offshore wind markets, with is a huge renewables market, and Manta is big for automobiles. We're also going to be using social media in awful lot differently than we've used before. Um, whereas in the past, I thought that they've been quite a lot, is using it essentially to just distribute information for our press releases, promote what we're actually doing. What we're actually doing now is actually using it to get involved in conversations and build relationships quite a bit. All the people in the papers, people that have been involved in the big conferences, all of the various different events that are going over, actually involved in the baby dream a little bit of a profile in different sectors. So, um, I particularly across the IFP, the IFP event which we held last week on Thursday and Friday, just pure, purely based on this one, just, just on, on the Twitter feed and on the LinkedIn page, we got that, we got the most, the most under the foot of 25,000 people out of them for no cost. So we'll be doing that more and more going forward as well. Kev mentioned before that this was more about shoe leather, shoe leather than anything else. We're not going to be placing a single ad for this campaign. We won't be picking out the in the IT, in the IT in any trip trade sales or anything like that. What it's going to be is that we're going to be knocking the right door at the right time. We've been working across some key people in the sector who have developed a huge database of the, the right people essentially in the Target approach and basically you pick up the phone and all the CD people to create a relationship with everyone else. So that's the way we're going to be doing it. Um, it's, it's just an awful lot more scientific. We're not even going to be doing a mass mail shop. Everything is going to be going direct to the person that's actually addressing it. So we're targeting a rather more two different people across all three sectors for that to get the As well as that, um, there was an example of it, obviously, this morning before the study, but there are a whole range of events and conferences that go on here. Right away across the country, throughout the summer and throughout the history of the autumn, as well as uh, in, in the rest of Europe and, and throughout the world, we are we'll be making sure that we've got a presence at all times. Everything gets actually key to us, and we'll actually either be there or we'll certainly have this meeting there with Deborah and Matthew Hart to actually talk about the local innovation message and make sure that we go away with Oxford and make sure that we go away with, uh, with some of the old old fashioned stuff, right? The, the print or the, or the view of the stuff that we're actually developing. What we've got, um, essentially, when we are actually got people out there doing this kind of work, it's we need to present to what it in, 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 in the most professional manner we can. So we develop interactive iPad, iPad presentations, and we cover offshore with automotive, and, and also cover all of the other key investment decisions that people make in terms of lifestyle, in terms of education, housing, everything else that we've got back to packages or to offer the relevant part of the data and that. But as it's all been built into an interactive presentation, that essentially went to everybody that's going to be working on this, we'll have that three times over, but we get the people out to take away with it as well. So it's just stuff that we can up, up, update and optimize and just keep working on constantly. We've also got some prints, which is, I'll get to make sure everyone gets a copy because some up here, but these were taken away by the ministers of the all of the other delegates at the conference. But essentially, for people to take away, and that's just a, an overall photo that talks about the product, which is really, really high quality prints, as well as individual targeted mail shops around offshore wind and automotive. So again, just really targeted to stuff where you just focus on just on the key messages. That's essentially the, uh, the, the campaign that we're going to be running. Um, this is the website we just launched. And that's the home page of the site. Now, the, the, there's a couple of bits that I'm going to show you. Now. I'm not going to take you through the whole site because I know there's a I might have to get a football and I'm going to get a watch. But, um, the first thing I want to show you is this, where it says all of the like, this is called PowerX. And this is the bit that I talked about that's being used for an awful lot of product launches, and it's not being used very often at all at the moment. But it's, it's essentially a static um, static animation that takes you through our entire offer. Now, it only lasts about, it lasts about two minutes. I won't, I won't go through the whole thing, but it takes you through, obviously, it's five months you open But as you can see, that it's, it just runs through all of the key messages, everything that we've got going, and everything that's available actually right now. Really unusual in terms of in, in terms of any kind of other website. If you go 
to any of the leads. Every one of you could see has got a name desk where our website. No one's got something anything like this. That's really that 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 team is targeted and that unusual. Um, you can all have got this on your on your own time, but I don't want to sit there and go just to, to watch the whole through the whole thing. The other bit I just want to highlight is uh, well you see it on the top bit is that it goes to the one key information, everything that we're actually telling selling as far as in as far as the public goes in terms of our industry strengths, sites and property, talks about the enterprise and talks about the lifestyle. A key bit I just wanted to show you is, is something else that's actually just brand brand new and isn't really done by anybody else. Um, this is just a general Google map of the UK. Um, it's panned out to that kind of um, that kind of distance because a key thing that we want to show, particularly internationally, is just how close we are to Google. In terms of yeah, it's, it's it's literally not that far away. It's approximately to London is really important internationally. Um, as I say, we've been targeted on automotive and <coughs> offshore wind. If people are interested in that, they click that and then the map three programs in and shows you every UK car park and their proximity to work. So you then zoom in on that and you can see what's actually nearby. So Leyland Instruction Preston, JLR, Gen GM, Toyota, Bentley, and all the way up as far as Nissan. So it shows you every single, every single different plant we've got up to the UK. When you go to wind farms, it's slightly different given that the North East is actually our main competition in terms of off, in terms of offshore wind. So when you click that, it actually zooms in and doesn't put them on. Um, so what it focuses on is purely the wind farms in the North, in, in, in our area. So you've got places like obviously Lairds, Bimbo Bank, places like that, as well as transport links as well. So you can see all the gear. And I found that went, and that can be really unusual stuff that the the is the staff come out. There's all sorts of other different functions to do this as well in terms of as I as I mentioned, Chinese and German translations, LinkedIn, Twitter, news, and as well as a live property search as well. So if you look at the business premises, you can find that it gives you a state of limited people of looking for any kind of business premises. That's actually um